Um, oh no no no! Oh, we can't go yet. We're not charged. Ow! Ouch! Ouch! I hate fire. Fire is horrible. Welcome everyone to another Let's Play. This is FTL or Faster Than Light by a tiny little uh, indie studio called Subset Games. Um, you can get this game for about 7 euro or I think 10 dollars on their page, just google it. And uh, it's a really cool little space simulator sort of game. A little different. They wanted to make not a space simulator but a game where you're actually, you know, doing ship stuff, systems, and so on. So let's go to the new game. I've already played this a little bit, so I have a few ships available. But at the beginning you have this Kestrel Cruiser. So as you, as you can see you've got all the rooms inside, you can hide them of course. But this is basically what you will be playing. You've got systems like the med bay, the shield system, uh, the weapons, the engine room, the oxygen generation room, uh, and so on. The pilot room, the door control room, and the, um, I guess, camera room or surveillance room. And these are the systems I was talking about. So what you do in this game is control these little people, control what you're attacking, uh, divert power to systems, so basically you're really a um, captain of a ship, you know, not really first person doing everything like in a fighter dogfighting stuff, but uh, you'll see, it's really, really a fun little addicting game. And you also, of course, upgrade, sell, buy, and so on. So for the beginning, we've got a missile launcher, which actually pierces through shields, uh, and a laser which has to go through shields first before it can damage ships and uh, the normal mode I'm still not that good at it so I'll go with easy just for this you know let's play it's quite a tough little game so what's going on is you'll soon see the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet you'll need supplies for the journey so make sure to explore each sector before moving on to the next but get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up Right, so here is our ship, uh, we are being uh, chased by a rebel fleet, because we're a federation ship, and there we go, we've got our weapon system, which are now offline, uh, we've got our reactor power, which we can put into different systems, so for example, if I were to turn off the oxygen supply, you will so slowly see these rooms all go, look, they're turning red, which means they're out of oxygen. And you can see here, oxygen is dropping, so I need to turn that back on, it's basically life support. The medical bay, we can turn off for now, because we're not using it. And we also move people um, around, so each of these stations, the shields, engines, and the pilot need, um, you know, the pilot absolutely needs, no, sorry, the, <laughs> the control room absolutely needs a pilot to function, unless you upgrade it, but it still doesn't function very well without it. We'll send Thomas to the um, shield room, so now it's crewed. You don't have to crew it, but it will increase its efficiency slightly. And we will send you to the weapons room, so weapons recharge faster, I believe. These are the rooms, you, um, uh, the doors, you can actually open and close them. These are the outer doors, so if you have a fire on your ship and don't have the manpower to, you know, uh, send people to extinguish it, as it's also quite dangerous, you can open doors, you know, for the vacuum to suck everything out, including the air, and thus, uh, you know, extinguishing fire. Or if you get boarded, you can suffocate people if you've got doors that they can't really breach very quickly. So anyway, this uh, burst laser uses two energy. Let's turn on that. There we go. There's a burst, la blur 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 burst laser, which is now charging, and the Artemis missile launcher, which is now also charging. Of course, this will go to zero when we jump, and they'll have to recharge again. And uh, let's put a bit more power into our engines there, because that increases the evade chance. 
uh, to evade incoming fire. Uh, in the ship screen, of course, up here we have the scrap, which is used to buy everything in the game. This is the hull, so now we're completely repaired. This is our shields. We only have one, a level one shield at the moment, but you can upgrade them. They're quite expensive, though. This is the um, amount of fuel, as you can see. Each jump consumes one fuel. This is the missiles, which we'll be using for Artemis launcher and various other weapons, and we have zero drone parts but we don't even have a drone control center so there's quite a few systems you can actually upgrade and have in these rooms uh, in the ship screen you've got the upgrades which all cost of course uh, these are the subsystems which are always powered unless of course they're destroyed the door system sensors piloting and these are the shields which are as you can see quite expensive to upgrade the engines, so you have more dodge chance and your faster than light charges up quicker. Uh, this is the oxygen generation, so if you really need oxygen quickly, you can upgrade this. Of course, you'll have to power it also. This is the reactor upgrade. Uh, this is the weapons control. So if you look over here, I've got three bars which is just enough to power these two weapons. So if I had another weapon here, I wouldn't be able to power it unless I turned off something, you know. So this is for upgrading that. And this is the medical bay, which basically increases the healing speed at which you'll uh, heal. Uh, this is my crew. You can dismiss them, but I don't want to do that. I should have customized them a little bit. You can only, you know, change between two different sprites but I like sort of like having different ones they they all increase over here crew skills they all increase in skills as they do them so for example Matt over here will increase his piloting skills which is this first thing uh, over time uh, Cadrel or what is it Cadrail Cadrail will uh, increase his weapon skills and Thomas will increase his shields uh, skills. So that all helps. And in the equipment, we've got our weapons, our drone systems, but we don't even have the system installed. And in the cargo, if you've got, you know, you can put it like this. And augmentations, which we don't have yet. So, what we'll do is jump. Now, you've got all these stars to explore, but you got to be quick. You can't explore them all usually because the rebels are uh, after you. So let's go here. It expends one fuel, remember. A small NGI research vessel is trying to fend off a Mantis ship. You move in to engage, but after a quick scan on your ship, of your ship, the Mantis ship retreats. Oh, the NG offers you a drone schematic as thanks for your timely arrival. Oh, so we got 12 scrap. That was painless. <laughs> okay. So you've got lots of these random encounters in the game, including fights. Oh, and by the way, you can open all doors or close them or all do it manually, as I said. Right, let's uh, jump forward. Let's go over here. The music is quite awesome as well. I like it anyway. You discover a nearby planet speckled with settlements, although none respond to your hails. Alright, so this is another empty uh, space. There's a store here, but I'm not even going to go there because we don't have enough scrap. And as I said, each time you jump, the rebel fleet moves closer. You'll see it soon enough. So if you go to a store and don't really buy anything, it's it's a waste of a jump and fuel. So let's go here. Ah! The awesome music kicks in. You arrive at Beacon to find yourself dangerously close to a star. An automated rebel ship, impervious to the heat, moves in to engage. Right. So what we have here is, as you can see in the background, there's a big star. And this is nasty, because this thing will uh, have solar flares and initiate fires on our ship. So we need to get out of here as quickly as possible and destroy this one. For the moment, uh, this game, there, with space, you pause the game. And this is really nice for tactical, you know, stuff. Uh, our FTL drive is charging, so we can't jump right away. Uh, this guy is, as you can see, uh, charging his weapons, although I have the game paused. And these are his systems. Right now, with the first level of uh, sensors, we can only see rooms and what stuff he has in his rooms. But not the actual crew and everything. 
and what's going on inside. We'll have that later when we are graded. So, let's send our burst laser to kick the sh shields. Actually, the burst laser will fire three lasers, so we'll attack the uh, weapons, so when the one or two lasers get through the shields, the third one will hit the uh, weapons. And let's send our missile through the shields and onto the shield system. I've unpaused the game now and we'll get a warning when there's a solar flare coming in. This is really not good. Uh, he's firing on us. Our missile is away. Boom. Stuff happens pretty quickly if you're not used to the game, but you know, after you are used. As you can see, I've destroyed his shields and his weapons, so he'll have to repair them. He d these automated ones don't have any crew. As you can see, there's not even any doors or corridors. And, but they have automated repair systems. So I'm going to click auto fire, but not use my missile because I used that up. The burst laser is free though. So we just need three more damage. Oop, I missed. There we go, solid flare. Ow, 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 ow. It's gonna hurt. There we go, fire. But fortunately, it's uh, in the room by the outer door. So we'll open these and purge the air from there. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Free fuel, that's nice. And this will extinguish the fire. There we go. But the room is red, which means that, uh, you know, it's got no air. Let's jump before another solar flare occurs. And there it is. I'll show you n next time as we jump. That's the rebel fleet coming. An advanced rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small rebel space station. Sensors indicate it's storage. It's a storage vessel for military goods. Attack the automated ship, of course. This room will slowly replenish with oxygen. And if you've been paying attention to the music, it changes pace according to what you're doing. So let's attack the shields first with the missile because that will go through quickly. And look at the laser, you can also see that charging here. Excuse me. Ah, oh, that's, uh, that's uh, an ion cannon. Uh, that took my shields out, and it also locked my shields, so... I can't recharge them at the moment. Ooh, that's not a good weapon to go against. And let's, now that he's out of shields, let's attack, it. Let's attack his uh, weapons. As you can see, they pop back in because I've destroyed the system quite immediately. We'll repair the surveillance later. No, oop, I shouldn't be using my oops, um, weapons, my missiles. The way auto fire works is right. You click on a weapon, select where you want it to hit. If I turn off auto fire, you get a red reticle. But if I click on a fire, it's sort of yellowish or orange-ish. This means, and there's a 2 here, because this burst laser is at number 2. This means it will continually fire. So, if you have the missile set here, for example, and you don't want to waste any more missiles, just select 1 and right-click, and you've deselected it. So now we have to wait for the uh, laser to recharge and destroy the ship, because he's out of shields. He's going to repair them, but we're going to shoot first. There we go. Scrap 20. The station is a storage site for military-grade weapons. You find one that can easily be attached to the ship. Halberd beam! Oh yes, this is one of the best weapons for me. And, uh... But, the problem is we don't have enough power to power everything. As you can see, not enough system power. It needs three power. It's not... It's not because he's, you know, third in line. It, this weapon needs three. But, look. Slow but reliably powerful standard beam weapon. Beam damage is reduced by one for every shield it passes through, which allows for partial shield piercing. But, look. This laser shoots three lasers, and it's one damage per shot. This thing cannot really go through shields well, so I'm not... I usually just use it when the shields are down. But, it does two damage per room. So every room it hits, it will do two hull damage and damage or destroy the systems there. And because you can actually say where this thing shoots, um, I can't really explain it. It's like a scalpel. It 
you know, it goes through rooms like this, and because you can set it, you can sort of trick the game into... I don't know, you couldn't really call it an exploit, but it's... Uh, you'll see. When I get it powered, it's a very good weapon. And I think... I'll want to upgrade something now. Let's see, if I... If I turn off the Artemis launcher, I need two more power here for the weapons. So, I can buy two more power here, but we'll not have enough power in the reactor. So, if I do it like this, then we can power this, but I will need to... You know, I can't, I can't really power it. I could take a little bit out of the engines, but if I take this out of from out of shields, I won't have any shields behind because shields take two at a time. So I still can't power this. And I will we'll need to wait uh, for enough scrap to afford the another reactor upgrade. We'll do that next time we get some scrap. Oh! I forgot to repair the... An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew members and the rest of you can go free unharmed. Draw straws and send a crew member over to the slavers. We will never surrender one of our crew to slavers. Right. Send the awesome music again. Uh, attack the shields. And then with the burst laser we'll attack the weapons for now. This seems to be, you know, the same tactic over and over. But at this point we don't have different stuff. Ow, he breached my shields. We surrender! Take one of our slaves as stupid to destroy us, they'll all die anyway. Well, I would like to say surrender is not an option, but I want more crew members, so... Oh, nice! Of course, you've got different aliens in this game. And this guy... Uh, I th he's not an NG. Can't remember what he is. But... Let's see. Crew. Zoltan. The Zoltan are close allies of the NG, or NG, I just call them NG because they're like engineers. Their innate energy is strong enough to power ship systems. Now this is cool, because which whichever room you put him in that requires power, like shields, watch this, watch my core power, there. And this is yellow, because he's actually now powering the shields. He gives you one more power. The downside side is they only have 70 health instead of 100, which humans have, for example, and they don't do... Actually, I think they only have reduced health, and that's it. Let's see. Yeah, maximum health is reduced. But they're, I think, invaluable. You, you mustn't have too many, though, because, you know, if they board you, you need to have someone who can fight well. But let's repair this. As you can see, this little bar is going up, so the more people you have... You can actually only have two people in these small rooms. Uh, but I am repairing this now. Oh, and my engines are damaged as well. But I believe I can power my Halbert launcher now. If I put him into the um, weapons room. Lauren. I think I'll put you into the weapons room, yeah. It doesn't really matter where you put him in, as long as you put him in one of the rooms that require power. Actually, wait. You could be operating the engines, because that's, that gives another 5% to dodge, look. But, because I don't have to use two energy in the engines now, I can use them in... in weapons. Not enough power. Oh yeah, okay, one less for engines. Boom, there we go. And this is a very nice weapon. You'll see why soon. Right, uh, this is where the rebels are. These are uh, stars where ha they have expanded and it's very dangerous. So basically if you jump there you have to fight and then get out, you can't even salvage. And this is where they will be the next turn after I jump. So if I were to jump here, they're not there yet, but when I come over here they would be there and I would have a high fight on my hands. Let's go over here. A mercenary hails you. Greetings, friend. We've heard tell of your quest. are here to offer our valuable services. Unfortunately, I'm broke, so I can't pay them to delay the rebels so I could uh, explore the sector more. So I'll just fight them because, you know, we will get more uh, 
Scrap and stuff. Mercenaries are worse than rebels. The only honorable course is to engage the mercenary in battle. Right. Let's use our burst laser first to breach their shields and damage their shields, hopefully. But even if we only breach the shields, that will be enough for me. Oh, look. They've got a teleporter here. And they've sent over a team member to, you know, try and cause damage. The problem is, this is a rock. He's actually... These people are actually called rock. And, um... He's got 150 health. So, we will definitely need backup there. Yeah. So, they're fighting now. Okay, that went through... Uh, I mean, that hit my shields, but... We're about to fire. There we go. He's without shields, and now I can use my halberd. What was that? Ah, he's teleporting bombs into my... Uh, and he's destroyed my shields now. He's got a weapon here that actually teleports onto my sh uh, ship and uh, teleports into a room, and now he's destroyed my shield. So before I repair them, I won't be able to have shields up. But I believe the halberd beam, which is now fully charged, will be able to destroy it. So, the first time you hit it, you will get, if you click, you have this line. And this is where the beam will hit. Now remember, every room it hits, it will do two damage. So, if I were to do it like this, like this, it would only do two damage to this room. So what do we do? We set it here. That's one room, two rooms, three, four. Yeah? So, you know, now you're basically damaging four rooms at a time. And we'll be damaging the pilot, uh, the weapon systems, and the teleport. So let's do that. Look at that. That was enough. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. One missile, one drone part, 24 scrap. But we still have this rock guy to take care of. However, that's not a problem now. Gotta take uh, care of the health of these guys. Be careful. That's not a problem now, I'll just leave these guys to fight it out. And... There we go. You can go back to the medical. And you can go repair the shields. But, because we don't have a pilot now, see, the evade is zero. So that's not really good. And you can't jump either. Oh, of course we have to power the uh, medical room, so he starts healing. And yeah, shields are critical because... Uh, the system is destroyed. Well, now it's damaged because it's only orange. But it'll be nice and ready right now. There we go. Can put stuff into shields again. Back to piloting you go. And you are on shields, yeah. Okay. It's always nice to put the same people at their posts because, you know, if this guy has... Well, he doesn't have a lot of skills at the moment, but... If this guy has, you know... Oh, who has skills? This guy has this much in, you know, weapons. So if I put it on shields, he would have to start all over again on shields. And his skill on weapons would be wasted there. So, this is what we're going to do. Let's see. We need more, a little more power. There we go. Now we can power the engines fully. So we have 20% evasion. Right. Let's go there. Also, be very careful. This game will kill you if you're not careful, and you cannot save. You arrive at the next beacon only to immediately be hailed by a small shuffle. Help us! We are being attacked by pirates! A dead civilian ship, of course. You power your... <laughs> you power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. I can't speak today. Continue. Right. So the first thing I do is press space so that the game is paused. Burst laser on shields again. Don't worry, stuff will get more complicated soon. But it already has because we had, you know, a guy bore our board our ship with a teleporter. You can also buy a teleporter and then board their ships, which is awesome. There. This laser is enough to pierce their shields and destroy their system. So now we'll do the same trick. We could go for these rooms. Like that. But, as I said, this beam does so much damage, they don't stand a chance, these guys. The pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to contact the civilian ship. So, now we have this from salvage, and the civilian ship wisely made a fast retreat while you distracted the hostile ship. So they didn't actually give us any 
reward. It's kind of crappy, but oh well. Next star. An especially well-armed pirate ship approaches you. Hand over one of your crew. Oh, that's the same one. We will never surrender. Right. I don't know why I'm getting the same stuff all over and over again, but don't worry. The game is not as monotonous. It, it is sort of a bit simple, but it's really addicting and fun to do. So, you know, you don't really get tired of it that soon. And, come on, for 7 euro? That's just ridiculous. Oh, look. He's firing the same kind of weapon I have, although this one is vastly inferior to mine. You can tell by the shape of the weapon. But, as I said, these things really don't go through shields well. So, I was, you know, a split second before he fired, I got my shields up. Otherwise, this th can do quite a bit of damage. And the music is awesome. So, let me wait for the halberd beam. And right. You gotta be a little careful with where you uh, point it. So, this will also damage four rooms. We surrender, take one of our slaves as tribute, accept their offer, but I think they'll die anyway. Oh no, they won't, because the damage quickly gets negated. Oh, this was so worth it. We got a mantis. Now these guys, they move faster, as you can see. Uh, they only do half repair when repairing stuff, so they're really slow repairers. However, they do, I think, one and a half times damage, or two times damage double damage in combat. These guys, if you've got two of these guys and teleport them to the enemy ship, they are so in trouble. So, you know, I like to spread out my uh, crew members in case we get borders, but I also like to pla place them in important uh, areas so they can immediately repair. And if you get the life support damage, that's really dangerous. Also, I was t telling you about that this game cannot be saved. Uh, so if you save and quit, that's it. You will have that game saved, but as soon as you continue, next time, uh, the, you know, it'll be overwritten. So you gotta be really careful, you cannot save. If you die, you die, that's it. The game is a little short, admittedly, but it's got lots of replay value. So, let's uh, jump to the next one. This was really worth it, I'm saying, as I said. Really, really worth it. Because a mantis is awesome, in my opinion. Ah, oh, no. This thing again. This beacon has been placed to... Oh, no. A parrot, apparently oblivious to the danger of the sun, moves in to engage. Right. So, oh, I heard a... A drone go. Let's hope it's just a defense one or something. Let's go for the shields again. Yeah, it wasn't a boarding one. As you can see, the door's opening. But we can't see what's really going on. Oh, I love this music piece. It's so much fun. Look at that. There we go. Excellent. We've only damaged their shield, so they're probably already repairing them. However, our halberd beam is ready. So what we can do... I think you can actually hit five rooms here. If you do it on the edge, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So that will be gone in one hit. It's trying to escape. No, you won't be escaping, mate. There we go. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful materials. I'm just reading this because it doesn't have any, you know... Um, oh, no, no, no! Oh, we can't go yet! We're not charged! Ow! Ouch, ouch. I hate fire. Fire is horrible. Right. Quick response, please. Now, this room is larger, so you, you can actually have four people. Extinguishing. Now, because they're in there fighting fire, they're actually losing health. But with four of them, that'll be done quickly. Actually, that was a bit stupid. Matt should go back to piloting because otherwise the FTR isn't charging, I think. Oh, we're just about to jump. I don't think we got any fires. Mercenaries are swarming the galaxy now, knowing that their less than legal services are in demand during this period of unrest. One is waiting for uh, this beacon and hails you. Right, we could uh, delay the rebels. I guess that's worth it, because we can explore more. 
makes its jump signature to mimic your own and then jumps off in the opposite direction. This should keep the rebels guessing. Oh, yes, we did get hit by fire, but let's just extinguish it with vacuum. So, let's send all these guys to the medical room and put fire, um, put energy into the metal metal. Why can't I speak? I do apologize. It just sounds ridiculous, right? This uh, room can only have three people inside. So, uh, let's put people back at their places. Do check their skills. So Thomas was in here, in shields. And close all doors again, because the fire has been extinguished. Right. Put more power into engines again. As you can see, now that we'll be jumping, we couldn't really go to this place without meeting the rebels. However, because we paid off that guy, we can go to this place, and it's got a distress beacon. So let's go find out what it is. Huh? Haha! I knew someone would fall into our dastardly trap. It appears this distress beacon was nothing but a decoy for a pirate to ambush. It not always is, though. So, ah, uh, he's got a defense drone. But I don't think it's gonna help him that much, really. Let's get our laser to fire at the shield system. I think this thing will try to f uh, to shoot some of our lasers. Ah, no, it's level one, so it can't really do that. And we've destroyed their shield system. And now the halberd will do the rest. Please don't kill us, we'll give you everything we have. We will not accept surrender. You usually get more if you just destroy them. I think. Uh, not necessarily in this case. Oh well. The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Alright. Uh, what else do we need? Well, we could certainly use more shields, but... I have enough to pay for them, but we don't have enough... Uh, power, so for now I'll just save up. Oh, and they're still not moving. Interesting. So we can go explore more. We can explore these two as well. Ah, another one like this. <laughs> Let's just fight this one. Oh, oh no, that's an attack drone. No problem. I thought it was a boarding drone. Those are horrible. This thing will be taking out my shields constantly, though, so that's not good. And he'll have a... Oh, and he's got a missile, so that goes through our shields anyway. And he missed. And he's about to die. Good night. <laughs> and the drone deactivates because he's not controlling it anymore. Right. And we should already... We should actually end this video. You detect an automated rebel scout attack and a small refueling outpost. Let's uh, help them. Oh, he's cloaking. We can't actually charge our weapons, which is a little weird. And we also can't... Uh oh, he's got no shield systems and shields, so we can just attack his stuff freely. Send the halberd to do its job, and this will be enough. Ow! He's using the same weapon, but he's not got a very powerful one, so... He's about to die. Good night. Boom. The cloaking also enables you to... Uh, evade stuff very well. The outpost hails you after the scout was destroyed. Thanks for the help. We've been harassed non-stop by these scouts. Take this on the house. Nice. So, let's jump to the exit point, and we'll go to the next sector. You've arrived at a long-range beacon. When the FTLL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. You arrive in the sector and are greeted by a science vessel. The hell you. We find ourselves low on fuel and have a proposition. Okay. They'll give us two drone parts for two fuel. Hmm. Well, let's help them. Why not? It's not really worth it, but let's help them. Next sector. We can't really go to these places because the rebels are here. So let's go to the... Oh, mantis are horrible. Let's go to the Uncharted Nebula. Why not? Right. The gases that make up the nebulas in this sector threaten to impair your systems. But you have to press on. And this will actually, as you can see, I can't see what's in these rooms because I don't have people there. The surveillance 
the sensors don't really work very well in Nebula. But this was it. I will save and quit here. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've liked this little game. It's really addicting, really a lot of fun. And if you like it, that's only seven euro or ten dollars. I think that's quite worth it. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll continue next time. Bye bye.